Hello everyone. My name is uh, Dr. Shikesh Shukre. Uh, I'm a third year uh, resident uh, in Department of the Radio Diagnosis, Krishna Institute of Medical Sciences, Karat. I'm going to uh, present a paper on comparative evaluation of ultrasound and magnetic resonance imaging in detection and grading of sport-related ACL injuries using orthoscopy as a gold standard. So as we all know, internal injury of the knee joint, it accounts for almost half of the all sport injuries. Physical examination technique uh, used in the assessment of internal uh, knee injury has its uh, limitation and it lacks uh, a sufficient sensitivity and specificity. MRI represents the optimal imaging in the evaluation of knee injury, which is far more accurate and is non-invasive method of diagnosing the ligament, meniscal, cartilage, and muscular uh, structures injury. Now, ultrasound, uh, it has been a little less popular as a diagnostic tool in the field of orthopedics. A normal uh, anterior cruciate ligament is delineated as a hypoechoic structure in sagittal and transverse uh, sections on ultrasound. And cruciate ligaments of the knee, they can be seen on MR imaging as a band of low signal intensity in contrast with high signal intensity of surrounding fat and other tissues. So aim of this study is to evaluate the role of ultrasonography and MRI in ACL injury in, in the sports patients. So objectives, the objectives are to investigate the diagnostic accuracy of ultrasound and of MRI and comparing them with orthoscopy as a reference standard. So this uh, is a cross-sectional uh, and observational study. Total 42 patients were taken. So inclusion criteria, uh, is all the patients with clinical diagnosis of knee injury in sports were, were taken uh, with the ACL uh, injury based on the pers persistence of uh, symptoms for minimum of three months. And the patients with previous history of any knee trauma, uh, his previous history of knee surgery and history of uh, steroid injection in the affected knee were excluded. And the patients in whom MRI is contraindicated were also excluded uh, from this study. So sonography, uh, the ultrasound scans were performed on a Siemens Accusen ultrasound machine. We used a high frequency linear transducer. Now, in order to examine the ACL, knee joint has to be flexed more than 90 degrees during its maximum internal rotation. Uh, on sagittal section, uh, the middle half of ACL is seen as a straight hypoechoic band. And if there is a no evidence of such a hypoechoic structure and if there is a associated joint effusion, now it is to be considered as a ruptured ACL. On MRI, uh, the like this examination was carried out on our uh, Siemens Magnatom Aviento 1.5 Tesla uh, MR machine. Uh, the study procedure was the patient uh, uh, kept in supine position uh, the extremity coil was wrapped around the uh, knee. The FOV was kept uh, between 14 to 16 and 3 to 4 mm slices were obtained. And this imaging is done uh, with a full extension in the neutral position. Now, we have acquired T1 uh, and T2 uh, wetted images along with STIR and PDFS images in coronal, axial and sagittal sections. Now, grading of ACL is done as grade 0 is intact uh, ligament, grade 1 is a partial tear with less than 50% uh, of disrupted fibers. Grade two is also a partial uh, tear, but with more than 50% of disrupted fibers. And grade three is a complete tear. Now, these are the sets of images in a case, in a first case, we can see this is a normal knee and we can see that we have a linear hypoechoic band, which represents the normal ACL. And in the, uh, uh, knee with trauma, we can see uh, that this band uh, is replaced by hyperechogenic thickened uh, structure, which represents a high grade partial thickness here. Now, in the MRI T2 weighted MRI image, uh, we can see the high grade partial thickness here of the ACL in the same patient. In the next case, uh, we can see in the right knee, uh, we have a normal ACL, and in the uh, uh, left knee with the history of trauma, we can see the ACL fibers, they are bulky and heterogeneous. 
representing the complete tear. Now, in the same uh, patient, uh, we have a sagittal PDFS uh, MR image, which is showing us a full thickness tear of the ACL. Now, in the third case, again, uh, we have the uh, normal uh, ACL in the right knee, and we can see a full thickness tear of ACL on the left side. Uh, the sagittal PDFS image in the same patient, we can also uh, appreciate that there is full thickness tear of ACL. Now the observations, these observations were uh, uh, grouped under three categories, the ultrasound grading, MR grading, and arthroscopic grading. Now we can see out of 42 patients, 25 pa uh, patients were labeled as a, a grade three tier on ultrasound, 29 patients were labeled a grade three uh, ACL uh, injury on MR, and arthroscopy, it's, uh, findings uh, were, uh, were like like in 29% patients out of 42 were having grade 3 uh, tier. Now the agreement between ultrasound and arthroscopic findings, like on ultrasound, 25% uh, uh, like 25 patients out of 42 were labeled as the grade 3 uh, tier. Uh, however, the 29 patients out of the uh, 42 uh, uh, patients uh, were <clears throat> having uh, the grade 3 tier in orthoscopy. So the above uh, table and statistics shows us that there is a good agreement between the ultrasound and the orthoscopy. And uh, as we, we can see in these tables, uh, 29 uh, patients out of 42 were uh, given uh, like were, were given as a grade 3 ACL tier on MRI and 29 uh, patients out of 42 were found out to be of grade three injury on arthroscopy. So now this about table and stats, they show uh, us that uh, there is a very good agreement between MRI and arthroscopic findings. Now the findings we have just seen, uh, these are represented as a, uh, in, a in a bar diagram uh, in this slide. Now for ACL uh, partial uh, Tier, that is a grade one and grade two injury. Now, ultrasound it has a diagnostic uh, accuracy of eighty four point six one percent, and MRI had a diagnostic accuracy of hundred percent. Now, when it comes to a complete tear, that is grade three injury, now ultrasound will show a more diagnostic is showing a more diagnostic accuracy than it was showing in the cases of partial uh, tear. Now, in ultrasound is showing almost 90.48% of diagnostic accuracy in complete tear. And MRI is showing almost 100% diagnostic accuracy in complete, that is a grade 3 injuries. Now, discussion on ultrasound out of 42 uh, patients of ACL tear, 25 were found to have grade 3 tier, 6 of a grade 2 tier, 5 patients of grade 1 tier, and 6 patients, they were found to be normal on MRI. Out of 42 patients of ACL injuries, 29 uh, uh, cases were uh, having a grade 3 tier, 4 patients of grade 2, again 4 patients of grade 1 tier, and 5 uh, cases were found to be normal. On arthroscopy, out of these 42 patients, 29 patients were found with a uh, grade 3, that is complete tier, 2 uh, cases of grade two tier, five cases of grade one tier, and six patients were found to be normal. Now coming to the conclusion of the study, now ultrasound can be used as a screening modality of choice uh, for uh, grading of this ACL uh, injury. Why? Because uh, it has a very good correlation. Uh, there was a very good correlation between what uh, are the like the orthoscopic findings and ultrasound fi uh, findings. Now it is easily available and it is a cheap modality. MRI, it is the most accurate tool in grading of the ACL tier, but now MRI has a limitation of a cost and time. Now, limitation of our study uh, are that this study was conducted on a limited number of patients, of 42 patients only, and these normal patients, they were not uh, followed. Now, these are the references. Thank you so much.